Well, good afternoon, Maple. Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. We are, uh, we're out here on a beautiful spring day. And so it's time for us to get some animals resituated from the winter. Uh, we, we tend to put our animals in smaller pastures and in paddocks and in the barnyards and things like that during the winter time because they don't have grass or anything to eat anyway. Uh, and so now it's time to get some, some males and females together with the pigs and just move some, some animals around. Uh, and so I'm going to take you through uh, a little bit of what we're doing with our pigs, uh, just kind of give you guys an update. I haven't done too much with the pigs since, since last year when uh, one of them almost killed me. Uh, but, uh, but since then, we've, uh, we've adjusted our operation. We are still going to continue breeding and having pigs, but we, just, uh, we do things just a tad differently than uh, I have done in the past. And so take you guys uh, kind of through that, and, and we're going to get one of our male pigs moved from the barnyard out into pasture with an unrelated female. So they can do their thing, and we'll have some piglets here in a few months. So this is the barnyard, and I'm sure once the pigs hear me out here, they'll probably come running out. Uh, this is where we keep the, uh, uh, at least uh, some of our pigs we're raising for meat, generally, in this little little messy area. So we have three here today. I've uh, moved one of the males out yesterday. Um, I did it a little differently than, <laughs> than in the past. What I used to do was just lead these pigs around uh, with feed. I would let them out and lead them into the next pasture. So from the uh, from the barnyard over there, I generally lead them out of the out of the barn door, and then they would come around. I would lead them down this little little alleyway that goes out to our hay fields, and then we'd come around the corner to the uh, the biggest pasture here. And so you have to go through this one, deal with the cows and goats, and then get into the pig pen, which is the pasture in the middle, and then the horses are in a pasture in the front of that, and so. It's really difficult the way these pastures were set up. So I've already moved one of the pigs uh, yesterday, so I'll take you, I'll take you through and show you how I did that uh, a little differently this year. I'm trying to be a little safer uh, with the, with that whole operation, so uh, we uh, we use the tractor this time. So I'll take you through and show you what I did there. All right, buddy, it's time to go. As long as I don't get stuck coming out here, should be all right. Here's the gate where I need to get them. So.
the dog is now on the opposite side of the fence in my neighbor's yard and can't get back. Yeah, what are you doing? Now she's got to go out by the road. <sighs> Sit down. Like your new friends? So here we have uh, uh, the two pigs now. We have Virginia, which is, she's an unrelated uh, sow. Uh, and she is, uh, you can see she's got the, the fur on these sows. For some reason, it seems to, I don't know if they're, if they're getting some mites or lice or something like that, but uh, a lot of times they end up this way in the springtime. So I'll get to her dusted down with some diatomaceous earth here in the next couple days, and that seems to take care of it as the spring uh, moves on. And then this is one of our uh, boars that was born last year from George and Martha, our original two pigs. And these guys are unrelated, and so they're going to be uh, living together for a little while. And we also got the ducks moved out here. So they have a little little uh, stream. So we've got this little drainage ditch that runs through here, and there's there'll be water out there for another couple months. And so the ducks are having a good old time out there. But the only way that I have found to keep pigs contained is with electric fencing. I started off without electric fencing. We had constant problems. And just seeing how dangerous the pigs can be if they get out uh, around other boars, uh, and that's what happened last year, um, they can be very agitated and dangerous. And so I have a wire run around almost all the pastures now. You can see that little electric wire down there at the bottom. Uh, this one's pretty low. And so sometimes the pigs will root up to it and they'll bury it or ground it out uh, or other things will happen with water or sticks laying on things and stuff like that and it can and i also have this high wire here for the cows and the horses when they come through and sometimes that that wire can can get loose knocked loose and things happen where we have to uh, it, the fence will stop working and that's what's happening right now um, the fence is uh, is no longer functioning and so we gotta we gotta go around and figure out what's going on with it and find the source of the problem so this is the, uh, the fence controller that I have. Um, I think I got it at uh, TSC or, no, I may have ordered this on Amazon actually. Uh, but this one, you can tell the, the fence okay light is not on. And uh, I've got my fence tester, so we'll go out and, and double check it. But I have a feeling that it's, it's grounding out somewhere. It's not, not functioning. And so we need to trace down where the problem is. Yeah. And everywhere I go, I always have friends following close by. In every direction. So a lot of times these uh, these are the uh, expanding pieces that uh, go by the gates. And so if I want to come in here, I can actually just grab this insulated, and I can take this piece off. And sometimes the connection here at the um, at these little loops that I've made can be uh, not very good, and you can sometimes hear it snapping there. And so these look pretty clean. Um, this one looks like it's been arcing a little bit. Maybe we'll try a different place with it. This is a pretty, pretty amateur fence job, so that was me. <laughs> Just go along here and take a look around. Um, sometimes stuff like this, you know, won't really hurt it too much. I'm just trying to stay out of the pig's pen. This is what happened in the spring last year when I got attacked by that pig. I was in there fixing the electric fence, but <laughs> my little little pond back here, it stayed thawed out all winter, but I had to start giving the horses water in their trough because it grew a, a good good hunk of algae. <laughs> so uh, it's not working out as I had planned. It worked out for most of the year though. So I don't see any problems here. I really like these uh, ceramic insulators. They were worked out really, really well. Why do you have hail over your head? What's your deal? I did put these on a little bit low. And so what I might do is I might move these ones up because the horses, as they eat hay along here, this is where their, their hay feeder is. Um, they'll, you can see they've got a bunch of hay all over the wire. And it's just, it's low enough to the ground where the hay won't be a problem, but it can push it down. Come on, 
Go on. Like right here, you can see it's it's just laying on the ground. And so this could be a problem. Um, I don't think this is where the, the issue is because the ground is pretty dry right now. I don't think that would completely ground it out, but we need to get this lifted up anyway. So, so we'll put a temporary stake up there and get that off the ground. And then I can turn the fence back on from my phone here and we'll test it and see if it made a difference. All right, so let's see if the fence is working. So we'll stick our probe in the ground and then we'll get our tester on here. Oh yeah. Oh, that thing's hitting hard. You can tell by how loud it arcs in that, uh, this little light or whatever you want to call that. It's not really a light, it's just a arc spot. What I may have to do is just come back and raise up these insulators here a little bit along this uh, this edge of the fence especially. I think I just got a little bit low here and also might, might need to tighten it a little bit. And so uh, you can tighten this wire just by grabbing some pliers. This is a steel wire. The aluminum wire just doesn't work with, but the steel wire, you can just grab it and twist, put some twists in the wire and it'll, it'll knot it up a little bit and it'll tension it a little bit better. So it's kind of loose here. Uh, that's another reason why it's kind of dragging, but. So that looks like all it was. Uh, pretty easy easy fix and sometimes that's just uh just what we have to do i want to make sure that the pigs especially <laughs> just i want to make sure they stay in their in their pen and this is the only way i found to keep pigs in is with electric fence uh, when i first moved out here i, I didn't want, really want to have a lot of electric fence running around i didn't want to have something else to maintain uh, i didn't want to have to shock our animals <laughs> but uh it really is the only way to keep them in they uh they dig under fencing so easily and uh, especially the ground here is real soft. So they'll root right under a fence. Um, the goats go over the fence. So the cow jumps over the fence. So the electric fence has made a, made a big difference. And now we can see we've got a, a light blinking here, which means that the fence is working. And so every time I'm in the garage, which is daily, I just check over here and look at this um, and make sure that this light's blinking. If the light's blinking, the fence is working. Um, if the light is not blinking, then something's grounded out somewhere. So I can check it, uh, make sure that it's on. So Virginia is, uh, she's used to the electric fence. It's been on here all her life, just about out here. But the new boar over there, we haven't named him yet. He's new to this. So uh, he's been in a pen out there without an electric fence that hasn't been turned on all winter. Um, and so he'll, we'll hear him squeal out here a couple times, but he'll learn quick. They. They, they'll test it once and then they, they maybe test it twice, but that's, that's about it. Um, same with the ducks, they'll, they'll learn. They're, uh, they're insulated a lot more than the pigs are. Um, they, uh, they have a lot of feathers and stuff, but, but they'll still get zapped and they'll stay away from it. So there's a lot of different, uh, different ideas or takes on fencing, I guess. Um, one of the things I hear people say, fencing is not to keep animals in, it's to keep predators out. Um, I, I guess I would disagree with that. <laughs> we, uh, it, it can serve both purposes for sure, but the main goal of pasture fencing is to keep your animals in. And that's the whole idea is that we want to keep the animals where we want them to be. Uh, we want to be able to rotate them through different areas. Uh, we want to keep them safe and secure, not running around our farm and neighbor's yards and roads and other things like that. So the goal is to keep the animals in. Now with the electric fence run along the bottom and run along the top, uh, and I also on this pasture uh, behind me with the goats and the cow, I have one run along the middle. Um, it will also keep some predators out. I mean, if a fox, you know, tries to sneak through the fence or something and hits that wire, they'll probably scare them away. Raccoons, they'll try to climb over or go through, they'll hit the wire, it'll scare them away too. So, so it definitely can, but that's not really our goal. We have pretty good luck with, we've never had an animal taken by predators besides um, chickens that were left out of the coop at night. And that's very rarely happened. Keeping these animals where we want them to be is one of the, the biggest challenges of having all these different animals here on the farm. Uh, we need to keep males separate from other males. We need to keep the males separate from the females, except for when we want them together. Uh, we need to keep different breeds of animals apart sometimes. Sometimes they can be together. And so it's constantly kind of this puzzle of where to put the animals in the pastures that we have. 
Uh, one of the things that we will be doing over the next uh, next couple months and next year uh, at least is trying to expand our pastures. Given the financial resources that uh, if we have that available, we want to uh, make more areas for pigs, more pasture rotations so that we can constantly move animals around, that we can garden behind them and, and rotate different various kinds of animals through and things like that. And so the setup that we have right now just isn't really great for that. Um, but uh, that's something that we've learned and that we need to improve upon and, uh, and do better here. And so that's gonna be one of the things that we're focusing on this year. As far as keeping the animals in, electric fence really is the way to go. And so the majority of the fencing that I'll be doing in the future will probably be uh, T-posts, metal T-posts uh, with wooden corner posts, and then electric fence, uh, you know, strands of wire uh, in between. The animals really just need to be taught that the fence is, it hurts them. Uh, once they're taught, even if the fence is out for days uh, or weeks even, uh, once they've learned that it will hurt them, they generally will stay away from it for a very long time before they need a reminder. And so uh, once you've electrified that fence and once they've hit it a couple times, they won't try to get through it anymore, uh, even if it's off. And so that's one of the advantages of the electric fence is it teaches them to stay away from the fence. It teaches them that's a barrier and a boundary for them that they cannot and should not go through. With traditional fencing, they, they look at it as a barrier, but it doesn't hurt them. And so they'll constantly try to find ways through it, over it, or, 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 uh, or under it, or around it. Uh, and, that's, and that's the thing with traditional fencing that, that is a disadvantage. So hopefully you guys like the, the kind of quick tour around in, in, in the springtime here. Uh, uh, pigs, we're still doing them. Uh, I, have, I, have, I definitely have a new respect for that animal after what happened to me last year. Uh, but I still, I'm gonna take that and, and I've learned. Uh, I learned a hard lesson. And, and we'll, we'll still move forward. We, we really like raising pigs. They're a great uh, um, animal for us. They, they provide a good income for us as well as a lot of food. And so we wanna keep, keep raising them if we can. Hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, today. Don't forget to hit thumbs up on the video today. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think? Electric fence, other type of fencing. What do you guys use? You guys uh, uh, um, who have been out there uh, doing this for, for maybe longer than me, uh, what, are your, what are your tips and tricks for those, uh, those who are out there who are looking to build more pastures or raise pigs or raise other animals. So love to have you subscribe if this is your first time to the SSL Family Day channel. Of course, we have lots of farming and gardening and DIY and all kinds of things going on out here. We'd love to have you tag along for all of it. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.